a man inside of a police vehicle, we call it a paddy wagon, is in danger because the officer decided not to follow protocol. He ends up, the officer ends up doing something that breaks his neck. Here's the first video. I'm stopping, I'm gonna check you out. What happened? What? You fell. What happened? Can you move at all? I can't move. Well, how your leg is all the way up there? I understand you, listen brother. All right, I can't move you, so I have to, hold on, I'm gonna have to call, get an ambulance. Listen, no. Huh? Yes, but understand. I have to, go ahead. I, I fall, I cannot move my arms. All right, do not move, I can see moving your arm. No. Okay. Look, look at my hand. I can, I all can't right, hold on, hold on. I have more video, more context. Let me give you a little bit of background to this. Before this happened, the young man that you saw, 35 year old black male, while in New Haven custody, was kicking the door. He was likely kicking the door because maybe it was hot inside of that cabin. Well, police officers do something called giving an inmate a rough ride. We saw this with the Freddie Gray case as well. That's a tactic that law enforcement will use when they don't like a person in their custody. They will put them in the paddy wagon, not put a seatbelt on them, and start driving around erratically. It's to punish the person in their custody. Randy Cox breaks the neck. Breaks his neck, excuse me, following an abrupt stop by the police. Mr. Cox was then dragged out of the van. Here's the next video. Cox, either we can move you or you can wait to answer. Oh, listen, I can't move you. I can't move you. Slide down, my man. No, oh, Jay. Yeah, slide down so you can get out of here. Look, look, if you got to drive me in, go start home. All right, all right. But I like okay, you. Know. I'll let her relax for a bit. All right, there you now, go. Almost there, you're almost there. Just get your shoulders out. Ready? Uh, One, two, three, stay there. Oh, there we go. All right. Get up. Why are you making up? Ready? Uh, I should go over here. Yeah. Get the. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You ain't cracking. You just drink too much. No, 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 no. you drink too much. I, I, I can't feel it. They accused him of faking. They broke the man's neck. They were supposed to take him to a damn hospital. They took him to jail with a broken neck, moving the body, which is prohibited in situations like that. Look at all of the protocols that were violated. You're supposed to put the individual in your custody in a seat belt. That's why they are present. You're supposed to follow basic traffic laws to make sure no one is injured. When someone is injured in your custody, you are supposed to immediately make sure they have emergency attention. This cop and these cops violated every tenet of their protocol, all of them. You know why? Because they don't value life. They did not see this brother as a human being. Culture, not policy, the policy is right. On paper, everything is spelled out. The culture is adversarial. So the police then booked Mr. Cox, uh, dragged him, took him out of the wheelchair. Here it is. Oh, sit up. What else did you have? Did you have some guns in the Listen, no. You're not fine. How many did you have? Okay, how much did you have to drink? Oh, oh my God, yo.
It's a damn shame. The ambulance eventually arrived. They immediately took him to the hospital. Let's put up his picture next to what happened after he was paralyzed. Richard Randy Cox was showing clear signs of paralysis. He was arrested on a gun charge of being taken to New Haven police detention when he was injured in the back of their transport van. Officer Oscar Diaz said he braked to avoid a collision. That is his story that he put on the record. Cox had to undergo surgery for his injuries and may suffer permanent paralysis. Let's talk about going against protocol here, all right? Diaz then resumed driving to the police department, despite Mr. Cox, a human being, calling for help and saying he was injured and could not move. A few minutes later, Officer Diaz stopped the van to check on Mr. Cox, who was lying motionless on the floor. Officer Diaz then called paramedics, but told them, just meet us at the station instead of waiting. Yeah, I'm taking him to jail anyway. I'm gonna move them anyway, okay? Let's put up the picture of the acting chief, okay? The acting police chief, Regina Rush Kittle, called the handling of Mr. Cox unacceptable. The chief placed five officers on paid leave while the June 19th incident is being investigated. Three of the police officers were placed on leave last week. Put up a picture of the mayor of this city, okay? His name is Justin Elliker. In a statement, The good mayor expressed concern that the actions of the officers, and I quote, do not reflect the high standards to which I know other police officers hold themselves to every day. Damn lie, let me tell you why that's a lie. You saw how many cops were involved in this, Mr. Mayor? Since you think your police department is so uh, culturally significant and correct, why is it that not one of those cops stopped this madness? Not one of them. Meanwhile, he said New Haven uh, prisoner transport vans not equipped with seatbelts have been taken out of service and the police department is working to install seatbelts and vans that don't have them. While the state does not require seatbelts and local police convenience vans, the city will require them moving forward. Another dynamic, go to the video, there are seatbelts. This van had seatbelts in the video. Try again, Mr. Mayor. All right, Adrian, thoughts here. You know, when these officers decide that they're going to stray from policy so that they can enact their own sense of justice uh, by treating people in in humane ways, um, inhumane ways, of course. You know what, it really is a reflection of not only our society and the direction in which we're going, but also just complete and utter disregard because they know they're not gonna face any accountability whatsoever. It's not them who are going to be paying for that settlement amount, the largely and likely six, seven figures. No, that's gonna be coming from we the people. And also, they got a paid vacation. They are enjoying this ride as far as I'm concerned, while this man may never necessarily walk again. It just shows you that the dynamics here, they're incongruent with any sense of justice or again, any sense of people who respect others as recognizing their own humanity. Why does it seem as if when that blue suit goes on, the humanity comes off? How can you sit there? And watch a man who cannot move, you can't fake all of that. I mean, literally this man had no movement from the neck down. And they continue to criticize him, they continue not to believe his story. You have professionals who are trained, Adrian, to see things like this and do something. What suits can be brought against the police for their negligence or maybe even intentional action here? Yeah, it'd be basic, uh, the thought that they had a standard of care that they failed to meet um, in some way that they had acted inhumane in the conditions that they kept him in. The problem is that, of course, we have such shields in place to protect law enforcement from facing any type of accountability whatsoever that I don't necessarily know how far they're going to get uh, because this gentleman will continue to live even if it's in the condition of being someone who is paralyzed. But I'm sure that the city will come to some kind of settlement. Uh, it's just It just seems very ignorant to ignore the fact 
fact that this officer likely did this intentionally. Again, as you said, there were seat belts in this van, so he could have prevented this entirely. And that this is just truly a reflection of, I wanna say rogue policing, but come on, this is just the standard, the norm and how they do business. Yeah, you're right.